I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday, July the 13th, brought to you in part by Joplin Stockyards, uh, recently named Market of the Month by Zach Tran here on the feeder flash uh, by good reason there for marketing so many cattle and helping so many producers there. Uh, I've told you guys several times uh, the, the last two weeks there, uh, one of June and the first blending into the first week of July, in uh, less than a two week span, they sold 27,000 head of cattle through the ring there, and, and that's really something to brag about. But the cattle harvest, estimated cattle harvest, uh, for this past week actually eclipsed year ago, same week a year ago. And that's big. I mean, we've been hoping for this ever since we uh, first heard coronavirus. But uh, we actually, uh, they're estimating more uh, cattle slaughtered for last week than we had the same week a year ago. Actually, 6,000 more. So I guess if we are starting to catch up on our backlog, we've only got 994,000 head to go to catch up. But I, I realize that uh, not all those cattle were steers and heifers. We've been killing a lot of cows too. And, and the bulls are actually bringing more than fat cattle are because uh, ground beef product, hamburger meat is, is so desirable and the market's been so good through the, through the skinning and, and the gouging and everything that went on. And there's a lot of, uh, of trimmings off of those steers and heifers and those fatter cows that needs to be blended with some lean product to uh, to get it back down where people uh, really want it and it takes a lot of bulls to, to throw in the hopper to get that done but uh, and and maybe we're working through some of these cattle a lot of people feel like we are I'm not sure where they're seeing that I, I think likely we'll we'll lose more in the heat over the weekend here uh, and that, that we just had in the extreme heat than, than what we worked through but uh, uh, we hate to see that but I tell you what down the, in the Texas Panhandle 106, 108. Uh, luckily the winds uh, have continued to blow which uh, we always cuss the wind and it makes things even drier if possible but it does keep the air moving a little bit and it makes it easier for those cattle to survive and most of those uh, feedlot pens out there don't have any shade or sprinklers or anything that like that but uh, the breeze kind of helps them get by. But uh, we've talked about a lot of things this past week. We had the Bassett Barbecue Auction on Wednesday. I tell you what, it really cranked up the index levels, both RTI and, uh, and your CME Cash Feeder Cattle Index. A day later, we're both up well over $3.5 there. And, and pretty much just because of Bassett. I mean, we had some other good sales in there too, but none of them launching uh, so far ahead as Bassett did and just unbelievable prices there. We talked about how uh, the bulk of the cattle sold direct out of the Flint Hills this past week. Uh, at the beginning of the week, hardly any of the Flint Hill cattle had sold. I'm talking about those green yearlings that they put out there for less than 100 days on the double stock pastures. Uh, the, the, at the beginning of the week, uh, hardly any of them had sold. By the end of the week, most all of them had sold. And uh, just huge, huge uh, uh, sales there and all on a direct basis. And this might be one particular time. Normally, we, we talk about how the auctions are give tri uh, price transparency and then market discovery. And you know, guys know that I'm a big, big proponent of uh, cattle auctions. This might be one instance, one single solitary instance where uh, the direct trade in the Flint Hills actually boosted some auction trade there. Uh, the word started getting out the, oh, kind of what those cattle were bringing out there and then all of a sudden you started seeing uh, your mid to late week auctions that had green yearlings in them all the way up in, in Mitchell, South Dakota, uh, all the way out west to Toppenish, Washington, uh, all the way uh, east into Kentucky, Paris stockyards there. Those cattle were bringing dollars and dollars more, uh, largely because of all the direct trade that had been happening in the middle of the week there. Uh, in your Flint Hill area and it is a big big indicator there guys but uh, you know most of those cattle that are bought uh, by your feed guards those are all feeder cattle yearling feeder cattle mostly weighing uh, in the upper eights and the nines uh, the heifers may be down in the low eights and there'll be a lot of spade heifers out there and they feed close to a steer but they're still not quite a steer but uh, those cattle are not being bought by your big corporate outfits. Those cattle are largely bought by your bigger established family feeding operations uh, that have been around for, for many, many decades. 
Those are the guys that want those best performing cattle. Those are the guys that have the contacts in the country to buy those cattle and they're the ones that know how well those cattle will do. And, and those cattle, I mean, it's unbelievable what those cattle will gain in the feedlot for something a day. But it's unbelievable, but uh, they bought most all those cattle and you think, well, late in the week when they turned all those direct sales in, is it even gonna make our, our CME cash feeder cattle index launch even more? No, luckily uh, USDA Market News has zero contacts out in that country and, and they won't be picking any of those sales up. So it'll still just be the same uh, big corporate uh, uh, outfits that turn in what they want to and then pretty much manipulate the index into whatever they want it to be. But uh, but uh, big happenings out in the Flint Hills and, and like I said, I, I'm hoping to get out there uh, with some of my contacts and my good buddies that got cattle bought out there and, and get to go with them on a couple of shippings. And if I do, I'll be sure and share the stories and, and the pictures with you. But uh, uh, we talked about uh, uh, Charlie Daniels passing away. Uh, you know, we'll talk about anything here on the feeder flash, but you know, Charlie Daniels was a big influence to a lot of people uh, in my generation. He was he was a, a strong voice for patriotism and Christianity uh, and the rural way of life. And and I tell you what, we're really going to miss him. Uh, I shared some stories about him and and what he meant to me. Uh, uh, I didn't share the one story. Uh, a little less than two years ago, uh, I took a, a little family trip, the same family trip that I took when I was a kid every year. But they used to have a pretty good rodeo up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. They don't have it anymore, but they used to have a hell of a rodeo up there. And we went every year when I was a kid. Charlie Daniels had a love affair with Cheyenne Frontier Days. He played there many, many, many times. And, uh, and we used to always go up there. We would, we would stop at uh, near Salida, Colorado and go whitewater rafting and that was our summer vacation every year. Well, a little less than two years ago, I took my daughters and, and did that very same trip. And uh, we stayed at Little America there in Cheyenne where I always did. And, and uh, one morning I was walking up to the, to the lobby there and I know many of you guys have been there. Uh, very disappointed to see that they didn't have the coffee shop anymore. That's where we headquartered, but I uh, couldn't believe they took that away. But uh, was headed up to the lobby one morning and uh, my si sidewalk met up with Charlie Daniels and his wife Hazel and uh and stopped there and i hollered at him and and shook his hand and him and his wife stood there and talked to me for a good 15 minutes and uh it meant a lot to me uh it probably wasn't a big deal to him but i tell you what a more gracious celebrity you'll never find and he was just a gentleman and just visited like old friends and and uh and i'll always remember that and uh I'll never forget his wife telling me, asking me where I was from, and I told her uh, the Texas Panhandle, and she said, oh, I hate it when we go down that way because Charlie won't pass a Brahms. He, he tells the bus driver to pull over anytime he sees a Brahms, and, and for you guys that have been down in this part of the country and in Oklahoma, you guys uh, could find some humor in that. But uh, what else did we talk about? Uh, uh, I got a new sponsor here, Real Max uh, 360 is a is a uh, uh, soil healthy mineral product for cattle and uh, and and they've got a whole different way of looking at things they actually feed the bugs they feed the good bugs that make the rumen uh, more active and more efficient and I want to invite you guys to get on a free webinar uh, with real max 360 it's a soil health summit it's July the 14th it's from 8 to 10 o'clock p.m. Central. It's a free webinar and get on there. I tell you what, it's really a, a novel concept there that they've got and uh, evidently really working well. But uh, you guys want to look into that and check into that. But looking at uh, mineral type programs in a whole different way. We talked about the, the new referendum on the beef checkoff. That is a big deal and there's a big, big push on that thing, guys. And I tell you what, uh, do I think that we need to get totally rid of industry funded uh, beef promotion? No, and I think we need to have money for research and development and things like that. But uh, you know, this still has been going on for like 35 years and it's just gotten to be so much money involved in it. Uh, that, that it leads to corruption and wasteful spending and now we've gotten to the point where some of the the bigger state affiliates 
are, are actually uh, using their power and that money. Uh, maybe it doesn't go directly to them, but they, they get to choose where a lot of it goes. They're using it against your grassroots movement that's trying to get something done for the, the livelihood and the, and the future of this industry. And, and that is not good, guys. I think it's time we probably get a referendum on that. And if we get enough uh, signatures, I think they need 90,000 signatures or something like that, which shouldn't be a big deal because they're going to do it for like a year. But uh, we'll get that deal done and then uh, get some cooler heads and get together, hopefully with a, a lot more uh, people that are, that are active in industry making decisions and get something else done that, that's worked a little different. Uh, the main thing they need to do different is the way they collect that. Uh, uh, the burden shouldn't be put on these sale barn operators. It shouldn't be put on your brand inspectors. Uh, it shouldn't be expecting these, these guys that are buying direct in places where they don't have to have inspection to turn that money in. They should just do it at the packing house. Uh, USDA inspection knows exactly how many cattle have been slaughtered in each of those facilities every day and they just however many dollars a head you want to charge uh, just charge it and then let it trickle down and it'll be so much easier so much more efficient you won't be using the money uh, to collect the money and, and I think it's a lot uh, better deal but a lot of big voices within the industry some peers of mine friends of mine guys I look up to Steve Stratford's one of them uh, John Campbell's one of them uh, Brian Winters one of them uh, a lot of the guys uh, are really getting behind this and and uh, and I think it's something that needs to be done. I mean, we're not naive enough to think that we don't need something, but uh, the way it's set up right now, and, and they've just got so much power uh, that, that uh, individuals can't, can't work against it. Well, let's, let's just cut the, cut the money stream off and then see what happens then, and maybe rein it in and, and decide a little bit better way uh, to divvy it up. But, uh, We've uh, had a lot of things going on. Very, very active week, post-holiday week here. Uh, this weekend, uh, I came out here to uh, Reno, Nevada, uh, doing this report a little bit early, but going to be leaving uh, Sunday night, so I'll be sending this before. But uh, headed out to Reno, Nevada uh, to uh, meet up with a bunch of contacts, uh, maybe, like, maybe uh, speak to uh, the small group. They're not going to have near the group that uh, we thought we were going to have due to the COVID-19, which is ruining everything. But uh, Reno, Nevada at the Nugget Casino, Western Video Markets got their big summertime uh, video auction there. 140,000 head total offered. 75,000 green yearlings here on Monday starting at 9.15 Central. Uh, you can get uh, watch it on satellite. You can get on to dvauction.com. You can go to wvmcattle.com, view and bid there, uh, or watch it on your TV and, and uh, get on the phone and bid. But 75,000 green grass yearlings on Monday, huge day, bigger calves, uh, and some wean calves on Tuesday and then lighter calves mostly for all fall delivery on Wednesday but uh, big big marketing's there but, and uh, the, a lot of program cattle on there too guys but let's talk about the board for the week there live cattle futures for August Monday was up 70 cents Tuesday down a dime Wednesday down 85 cents Thursday up a dime Friday up 75 cents with live cattle futures for August ending the week at $100 even up 60 cents for the week. October ended at 104.57, up $1.90 for the week. August feeder cattle, Monday was up $1.27, Tuesday down $1.22, Wednesday down 87, Thursday up 47, and Friday up 122 with August feeder cattle futures ending the week at 135.75, up 88 cents, but that's not near enough. Uh, because the, the cash market was up uh, a lot more than that. But we are seeing those index levels and your, your spot August feeder cattle kind of come together. But uh, your, your cash market's gained a whole lot more than that, but it kind of closed the gap on that basis. September feeder cattle, 137.32, up $1.47. Your fat cattle trade through Thursday, 
in your five area feeding region, negotiated sales of 104,100 head continue to see a pretty healthy negotiated movement, but it won't last, guys. We've got to get the, the mandated minimum uh, negotiated cash requirement done. We've got to get it through. It's the spot cash bill that uh, Chuck Grassley put through, and uh, you've got to call your, your representatives, your senators, and tell them that you're interested in that bill. We need to, to at least get a Senate hearing on it and get a vote. Uh, but uh, but uh, pretty healthy cash movement last week through Thursday, like I said, over 104,000. And then a little bit more trade on Friday. We'll talk about that. But through Thursday, live sales and steers and heifers from 90 to 101.50, still seeing the big wide price range. Weighted average is where it's at. Weighted average on live steers, 95.97 through Thursday. That was up around a buck. Uh, dress sales, 155 to 160. Dress steer weighted average 157.67, up about four bucks. So uh, pretty good gains there on your fat cattle trade uh, last week. Friday had confirmed sales, just some kind of cleanup deals. Iowa a thousand head from 99 to 101 dress. So that was at the top of the price range there, 155 to 157, which was uh, pretty steady there. Nebraska just about 700 head, all at 96 and 157. Kansas about a thousand head from 94 to 95. Texas didn't have any. Colorado printed. Whoa, finally got a, an a, a extra packer participating in there uh, where we could get some of it through those uh, mandatory price reporting confidentiality filters. But about 200 head reported in Colorado all at 96. But that's information. Box brief cutout values were lower last week but that but seemed to find some footing i mean it wasn't a complete wreck and then they, they fell uh just as fast as they went up there during the gouging and the worst of the covid 19 but we're back now under where we were before we started seeing the effects of of the coronavirus but choice cuts your weighted average on last week's sales all together all of last week's sales put together choice 204.54 and that was down two dollars and one penny uh, from the weighted average the week before. Select cuts your weighted average for all of last week, 195.69, down 376. Uh, your choice select spread on your weighted average was just under $9 at $8.85. Pretty decent movement, but nothing like we saw uh, when they were trying to, to get the pipeline filled back up. But 727 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings. It's interesting to look at your actual slaughter i talked about uh, your your uh, estimated slaughter for last week under federal inspection 664,000. that was huge because it was 6,000 more than the same week a year ago first time we've done that so we've gotten fully back and now maybe starting to try to do a little catching up there but your slaughter for the year to date is still down 5.6 percent it's almost exactly a million head and people think that those cattle are, have disappeared out of thin air. And we knew coming into this year that we were going to have to slaughter more cattle than we did last year. And we were on the pace of doing that before we got into the coronavirus. But during all that, we, we, we got far behind because we're only at uh, 16,516,000 compared to 17,503,000 a year ago. So uh, just a, a little bit less than a million head there and uh, it's going to take some doing to catch up on that and I still think and I know you guys get tired of me being embarrassed but I still think those fundamentals are going to come home to roost at some point but hey we've been riding away especially on these cash feeders here for the last two or three weeks let's continue to do it get this uh, western video over with get the northern video over with and uh, get the rest of your uh, guys that sell private treaty get those cattle sold and then let the market do what it wants to do but let's talk about your feeder cattle late in the week there. Real-time index on DV auction, 134.18. That was uh, up 35 cents for the day, up about five bucks for the week. Unbelievable. And a lot of it had to do with that Bassett barbecue sale. But all your sales were very, very good on your yearlings. Uh, calves were not really well tested around. But yearling feeder cattle... Uh, for the week in your auctions, four to six dollars higher, and it was at least that much higher on your direct sales. Talk about some individual quotes. St. Ange Livestock, St. Ange, South Dakota. My buddy Justin Tupper there, he was in Fort Worth. He had went down there for the big 
week in the Rockies that didn't turn out to be in the Rockies because of the COVID, but uh, he was getting frustrated because he hadn't quite seen that much shutdown yet, but uh, he made it back uh, to St. Ange in time to run the sale there. Man, he had a good one on Friday, including this lot, 82 steers, weighed 771 at 147.50. Now let's go out to the east there. Bluegrass Stockyards, Richmond, Kentucky. My buddy Jim Dawes, that's his sale there. He's managed that thing forever. Look at this. Downtown Richmond, Kentucky. 101 head, 990 pound steers. Nearly a grand a piece, guys. 125.60, and that's dang near two loads of them. Torrington Livestock Markets on Friday. Had to stick out sale, uh, sale for the day. 163 head. 829 pound steers bring 141.50 and that's your feeder flash for Monday.